So I've been working the night shift at this old gas station on the outskirts of town for about six months now. I guess you could say I've seen my fair share of weird stuff, drunks, late night pranksters, the occasional wild animal rummaging through the trash, but nothing that really freaked me out until last Thursday. That night started like any other. I clocked in at 11 p.m., grabbed a coffee, and settled behind the counter with my book. Not many customers on a Thursday night, which was fine by me. About 2 a.m., the bell dings and the sky walks in. He was a regular looking dude, mid 30s, wearing a hoodie and jeans. Something about him felt off, though. He didn't make eye contact, just headed straight for the aisles. I tried to go back to reading, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. I glanced up at the security monitor and saw him lingering in the snack aisle, but he wasn't picking anything up. He just stood there, staring at the shelves. A chill ran down my spine. Ten minutes passed, and the guy finally walked up to the register with a bag of chips. He still wouldn't look at me. When I told him the total, he just nodded, handed over a crumpled bill, and waited for his change. As I opened the drawer, the lights flickered. I joked about the building being old, trying to lighten the mood, but he didn't react. When I looked up again, his eyes finally met mine, and there was this desperation, maybe, fear. It was hard to pinpoint. He grabbed his change and left in a hurry, almost running out the door. I tried to brush it off and went back to my book, but the vibe was totally killed. Couldn't focus. About an hour later, I decided to take a quick walk outside for some fresh air. That's when I noticed it. His car was still in the parking lot, parked way at the back. Now, I'm not the bravest guy, but I thought maybe he needed help or something. Maybe his car broke down, you know? So I approached the car, calling out to see if he was all right. No answer. The closer I got, the more I could see that something was really wrong. The front door was slightly open, and there was a phone on the driver's seat, lit up with a text conversation. I shouldn't have looked, but I did. The last message sent was, please, just let me go. I won't tell anyone. My heart practically stopped. I stepped back, not sure what to do, when I heard sirens in the distance getting louder. I ran back to the store and called 911, told them about the guy in his car. Cops arrived in minutes. Turns out the guy was kidnapped earlier that night, and his abductor had ditched him there while he figured out his next move. The desperation in his eyes made sense now, and the reason he ran out so fast was that he'd managed to escape when his kidnapper was distracted. It took a while for the cops to piece everything together, but eventually, they caught the kidnapper using the texts and calls from the guy's phone. They told me the guy was safe, no serious harm done. But man, I haven't been able to shake the feeling of that night. Every time someone walks in now, I can't help but feel a bit of that fear wondering what their story is, wondering if I'll ever have a normal night again. So I work the night shift at Westfield Correctional, a medium security prison. Been at it for about three years now. Most nights, it's just routine stuff. Patrols, monitoring the cameras, the usual. But there was this one night just a few weeks back that I still can't shake off. It was a quiet night, or so it seemed. Nothing unusual on the monitors, inmates all locked up and quiet. About halfway through my shift, around 2 a.m., the power flickers and goes out. Total blackout. This isn't supposed to happen. We have backups for the backups. I grabbed my flashlight and started my rounds to check the backup generators, thinking maybe it was just a fluke or something. As I walked down the dark corridors, the backup lights should have kicked in, but they didn't. It was just me and my flashlight in this long, dark hallway. The silence was eerie, not a sound from the cells, which is weird because usually you'd hear someone stirring or talking. I reached the generator room and everything looked fine. No reason the power wouldn't be on. I was about to leave the room when I heard a door slam shut down the hall. Now, in a place like this, that kind of sound can make your heart stop. I radioed into control, 
asking for a status report on the doors, but there was no response. The radios were down too. I made my way towards the sound, flashlight beam shaking a bit, not gonna lie. As I approached the source, I saw that it was one of the side exits, the door swinging slightly open. Now this door should have been secure, always locked from the inside. I pushed it open, and the cold night air hit me. I stepped out for a better look, and that's when I saw footprints in the dew on the ground. Leading away from the door, panic kicked in. An inmate escape on my watch? No way. I rushed back inside, locking the door behind me, and sprinted to the nearest security station. Using the manual override, I started a headcount with the other guards. It felt like forever, checking each cell, counting and recounting. After what felt like an eternity, the power suddenly came back on. The radio started buzzing, control calling in, asking for reports. Turns out the footprints were a false alarm. Somehow a maintenance door hadn't been properly secured, and a local animal had wandered close to the door. But here's the kicker. When we reviewed the security footage from before the blackout, one of the cameras caught a brief glimpse of someone in a guard uniform tampering with the backup generator controls. We never figured out who it was or why they did it. None of the guards matched the blurry image, and no one knew had been hired recently. Could have been a setup for something bigger, but nothing else happened after that. They increased security protocols, added more cameras, but the guy in the footage never saw him again. That night shook me up real bad. Made me realize how quickly things can go south, even when you think you've got everything under control. Now, every time the lights flicker, even for a second, you bet I'm on high alert. Man, I never thought I'd be one of those guys with a creepy story from working the graveyard shift, pun totally intended. But here I am, sitting here trying to make sense of what happened just a few weeks back at Evergreen Cemetery, where I work as a night security guard. It started off as any typical night, me starting my rounds at around 11 p.m. Evergreen is massive, full of old tombstones and mausoleums that look pretty eerie even in the daylight. But at night, it's like a whole different world, a still and silent city of the dead. The only sounds are usually just the wind rustling through the trees or the occasional night animal scurrying through the underbrush. So, I was about halfway through my first round of the night, walking by some of the newer graves near the back of the cemetery. That's when my walkie-talkie crackled to life, static at first, then a voice, clear as anything, saying, Please, come to the old chapel. I need help. The old chapel. It's this small stone building near the center of the cemetery. Hasn't been used in years. I thought maybe some kids were messing around in there. It wouldn't be the first time. I made my way to the chapel, shining my flashlight around, expecting to catch some teenagers or something. But as I got closer, the air got colder, which was weird because it was a pretty warm night. I called out, warning anyone inside that I was coming in. No answer. I pushed open the heavy chapel door, the hinges groaning loud enough to wake the dead. Inside, it was pitch black, colder than outside. I called out again, still no response. Then, as I stepped further in, my flashlight beam caught something on the floor by the altar. It was a fresh bouquet of flowers, still vibrant and colorful, lying there. That sent a chill down my spine. How'd fresh flowers get here, in a locked-up chapel no one uses? I heard the door slam behind me. I spun around fast, heart pounding in my chest, but nothing was there. Just the sound of my own breathing and the faint echo of my movements. I tried the door. It was locked. Now, I was starting to freak out. Not gonna lie, I was scared. I checked my walkie-talkie to call for help but it was deed, battery drained completely, which made no sense. Then I heard it, soft whispering coming from back near the altar. I couldn't make out words, but it sounded like a woman's voice. I shined my flashlight all around, but there was no one. The whispering got louder, almost desperate. I felt a gust of cold air pass right through me, the flowers by the altar stirred as if caught in a breeze, 
yet all the windows were sealed shut. That was enough for me. I backed towards the chapel door, slamming my shoulder against it. It burst open, and I stumbled out into the night, never looking back. I ran all the way to the front gate, locked it behind me, and waited for my shift to end sitting in my car with the doors locked. I reported the incident to my boss the next day, and we went back to the chapel in daylight. No signs of forced entry, the door was unlocked, and the flowers were gone. Nothing on the security cameras either. He thought I was pulling his leg, but I know what I heard and felt. After that night, I requested to be moved to day shifts. Whatever was in that chapel, it wasn't something I ever want to encounter again. I can handle quiet and darkness and even the creepiness of a cemetery. But that night, that was something else. Something I can't explain. Thank you for joining us in the shadows tonight. Did our tale send shivers down your spine? If it did, and you crave more chilling tales, show your support by giving us a like and hitting that subscribe button. Your support keeps the horrors alive and lurking in the dark. And we're always eager to hear your darkest fears. Drop a comment below with the horror stories you'd like us to unearth next. Who knows, your suggestion might just be the next story to haunt our channel. Until next time, keep the lights on and stay out of the dark. But remember, even in the light, they're watching.